So earlier in the presentation, we talked about the different types of audio tracks that were available inside of the Premiere Pro environment and how that might affect your transition in terms of how you get material to the timeline and just how you might have to adjust your workflow to get used to the different types of tracks that are available in Premiere. I want to revisit audio now, but now we want to emphasize a little bit of the difference between um, trimming and mixing and effects that are available between the two applications because although you can work very similarly between uh, Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, uh, Premiere Pro offers a lot of tools that aren't necessarily available in Final Cut, and there are some definite things to take advantage of. So the first of these, which is probably the most obvious, is that inside of Final Cut, if I zoom in on the timeline, you can see, of course, that I have the capability of working at a frame-based level. If I step back and forth, I'm working at a frame-based level in the user interface with the time base up here, and the gray cursor area here is indicating to me that I'm working at a frame-based level. Uh, conversely, if I step over to Premiere Pro, I not only have the capability of working at a frame base level, again the interface is very similar here, my ruler is showing me that I'm working at a frame base and I'm stepping frame by frame here, but if I come to my drop down panel here I have an option to jump into what's called show audio time units. Here what I have access to now is I can step down far below the frame level I and mean, I have the capability for example of stepping in and actually working all the way down at, and let's get somewhere where you can actually see it a little bit better, but we can have the capability of working all the way down at the sample level. Um, and you can get a much more granular scrub. So if there are things that are happening, like pops or clicks that are happening below the audio frame, you can actually make those adjustments within the uh, Premiere Pro environment. In fact, you can even go so far as to, for example, razor blade a particular area. If you need to make adjustments, those adjustments can be made sub-frame. So I can go ahead and trim that back. We can uh, put those two clips together. And then if I use a keyboard shortcut to add a transition uh, to this point in uh, time on the timeline, here, I can actually edit the transition, and my transition to smooth over that cut point can be less than one frame. So not without even leaving the application, I have the capability of um, making subframe adjustments, which is uh, particularly powerful. Now, in terms of audio uh, mixing, there's also some differentiation here, but they uh, both applications start out from a fundamental uh, similar premise. Let's jump over to Final Cut Pro for one second. We can talk about the fact that both Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro, at a fundamental level, have the capability of working at a um, event-based audio mixing and effects level, which means that fundamentally audio mixing and effects are attached to individual events on the timeline. What I mean by that is, of course, if I zoom in on the timeline a bit and we grab my pens tool, we can do uh, the typical mixing that you would uh, normally do inside of, of uh, Final Cut. Let's add some keyframes down on the timeline, make those adjustments, and of course, uh, that's going to create automation. So if I uh, open up my mixer and we were to scrub through the timeline, of course you can see I've got automation happening there on the timeline. Very, very straightforward stuff. If I move this event, however, and we move it down the timeline, notice that the automation actually happens within the bounds of the event itself. Comparatively, if we were to jump over again to Premiere Pro, I can start out working that way. I can say, let's go ahead and grab my pencil, similar keyboard shortcut here, and add keyframes to the timeline. We're going to marquee these uh, guys down here. We'll make an adjustment to the timeline. And again, I can create automation at the clip level. So if I uh, grab my uh, arrow tool and we move the event down on the timeline, again, the automation is married to the event. Oops, the automation is married to the event. And the automation will stay in sync with the event on the timeline. However, uh, that's only the first level of automation that Premiere enables. If I come back over to the left side of my timeline and I uh, click on my keyframe, uh, icon here, I can change from what's showing clip keyframes to showing track keyframes. Now you can see I've got an automation event that extends across the duration of the entire track as opposed to being married to just the constraints of the individual element on the timeline. So what that means is that not only can I have um, mixing effects that are married to and will stay in sync with the individual event on the timeline, but I've got a whole secondary level of events that can be modified within the audio mixer. So now I can do very, very specific um, events that are married to an individual clip on the timeline, but then additionally it's possible for me to add another whole level of audio mixing um, and automation that happens above that. So this is useful, for example, if I've got an area of the edit where I want automation of a music passage to be quiet, but let's say, for example, later on, the producer says that they would like to use uh, an entirely different piece of music. Since my automation is now at the track level and not married to the particular clip, I can easily swap out the music and the mix is going to be maintained. 